So this is um, video number two uh, of the Gaia 21 initiative launch series. So I was not sure how many videos I wanted to make for this uh, series. So probably this is going to be one additional one, but I, I, I figured it was important to make one because uh, based on the, the first reaction from the first from the previous video, uh, people they, they told me that they it's important for them to, to get information so they get um, to, to enable them to be aware and to uh, decide to think and act about it. So this is an important part of this video. So I would like to make this video and this one is about storytelling and perspective. This is very important because this is uh, what you're going to get from the media and from uh, uh, switching on your television, what you're going to find out is that, okay, there's been this event that we already discussed, it's COP27, where uh, all the countries gather, most important industries gather, and they, they say, they decide to, to, to do, to try to, to, to negotiate, to find out solutions to, to help tackle uh, emissions. So reminder, uh, 1.5 degrees emission, you have to stay under that so that we can have living condition on Earth still. But we already find that it's not going to happen because we didn't do what was supposed to be done. So 2.8 is where we where we heading right now, and it's not very good for us as a species and for all the species on the planet. Okay, so this is the context. Now the storytelling is going to say two things. First thing is going to be that uh, they are they have decided that they're going to make a fund for developing developing countries to help them deal with. Uh, the consequences of climate change is a good thing. Second aspect of the stories is going to be that uh, they could come to terms with their negotiations about emissions. Okay. Point number one, it's a good thing. After 27 years, to finally decide that it's time to, uh, to create a supporting fund for developing countries to help them deal with the consequences of climate change. It's a good thing. But still, it's a consequences aspect. You look for the consequences, not walking on the course, but trying to, to do something afterwards. Okay, it's a good thing. Second thing, negotiation, dead hand, which was completely, completely uh, to be expected. So just try to remember, there's been... 27 years of negotiation over the same topics. So this is COP27, so negotiations were ongoing on 20, COP26, 20, COP 25, 24, 23, 2, so on. 27 years of negotiation. No result, no agreement, because people are hanging on to their privileges. They don't want to regret their, their rights. So what I think, what I believe is that those people cannot be trusted. When you spend 30 years negotiating about something, and you can come up with an agreement. That means two things. One, you don't really want an agreement or you don't care for the agreement. That means that you are you're individualistic or your personal needs or privileges or whatever you have is more important than what you're negotiating for the second aspect of it and that's why it cannot be trusted so that means they put before their own agenda before something that should be uh, the most important agenda of everybody on this planet we are four to five years before we cannot come back before it's too late we're talking about survival of species <laughs> we're talking about extinction this is crazy so it's, this is not important. So let's focus on keeping our privileges. 30 years negotiations, nothing to show for it. This is where we are. So this is even more interesting because now I'm going to add my own storytelling to this. So just be aware that the 23 richest countries in the world, military budget is 30 times, 30 times, more important than the budget that is supposed to be the one we need to be tackling climate change with projects linked. 
So 30 times more money is actually spent today on military. And next to nothing is spent on something that we need to be done to survive a species. So of course it's more interesting to destroy than to build. And you get more money by uh, fueling the <laughs> military industry than by uh, helping people deal with climate change consequences. Okay. Now to add to this story, I won't push by reminding you that the the main sponsor of the event is Coca-Cola, which is just simply the biggest plastic polluter of the world. And the sub sponsors are oil and fossil fuel industries. That's pretty logical. So those are the main cause for climate change in terms of emissions. And those are the ones financing the event that's supposed to help. So yes, it could work. In theory, it's be like they, 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 they take responsibility what they're doing to try to do something to change that. But if you look into the facts, look into the 30 years or nearly 30 years of negotiation that goes nowhere, I think you have your answer. Um, to add fuel <laughs> to the fire, um, there's some report about the fact that in 2021, the projects that have been approved for seed fuels industry projects, they amount for 11 billions of tons of CO2. 11 billions of tons of CO2. This is more than all the emissions of China for one year. So we have the, the big evil for many people, China, which is the most polluting country in the world with the US. And the budget, sorry, the, the, the amount of emissions for uh, fossil fuel projects, 11 billions of tons of CO2, more important than whole China. I would let that sink in, whole China for one year. This is where we are. So this, those are the people that are uh, up front here on COP27. So it shouldn't be a surprise that we're not going anywhere with this because we're dealing with a conflict of interest of the biggest scale. Those people cannot be trusted. So there's something that should be done. So what can be done? This is the topic for upcoming videos. Thank you. Mm -hmm.